<coughs> Time once again for the, the friendship, friendship game. game, where we roll the die, answer great questions about friendship, and move inextricably around the board. That's hilarious. <laughs> Hey everybody, I'm here today with my awesome friend, Sherry. Hi. We're both members of the Los Angeles Breakfast Club. That's how Sherry and I met one another. Sherry, thanks for being here with me to play The Friendship Game. Dun, dun, dun. Do you know anything about The Friendship Game? I know nothing about The Friendship Game and I'm a little bit afraid because I want to win it. I'm not sure if that's <laughs> the spirit of the game or not. <laughs> Well, it's not not the spirit of the game, I will say that. So here's all you need to know. We're going to roll the die, go around the board, and answer some question cards. We have to pick a topic card. So go ahead and pull out the first card that's in there. Today's topic is, are all my friends the same race? Hmm. Ooh, that sounds like that could uh, get a little spicy. It could be racy. <laughs> See what you did there. <laughs> All right, so go ahead and roll the die. All right. Let's get this fired up. Okay, five. Five. You can go in any direction. Okay, I'll just go in this direction. Okay. Two, three, four, five. Roll again. Okay. Okay. I'm on a roll. <laughs> yes, you are. I didn't know how punny you were. Yeah, it's pathetic. <laughs> and I can't stop it. Okay. Because I think I'm Rodney Dangerfield. Oh, do you? Yeah. I will keep that in mind. Mm -hmm. All right. You just don't get enough respect, do mm -hmm. you? None. Okay. None. All right. So go ahead and draw a card. Okay. What if you don't live in a diverse place? Oh, Ooh. so getting back to our topic, are all my friends the same race? Maybe, maybe we should start by saying, is it good to have diverse friends I don't know I mean I think it is but then I'm like I always seem to have have like had diverse friends my whole life I think mm -hmm. so to me it's fun I feel like I'm always like learning new things and I'll have like people to talk to to have different perspectives on a lot of issues yeah yeah and so what if I didn't live in a diverse place because we live here in the whole big Los Angeles and there's all kind of people here yeah so if I lived in a town where it was just people just like me yeah, if you were in a, a smaller town. I guess I would just try to be as friendly as I could in my little small town. Just go visit the general store, not really worry too much, mm -hmm. I suppose. And yeah. then if people would come travel to the town, I'd be very welcoming because I'd still want diverse friends. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like you have a lot of friends who are your same race? So mm -hmm. I have a lot of friends that are a lot older than me, which I just met a bunch of people that, like, that are like 100 or 90 years old and they're like really nice people in my community. And so that's been a whole nother adventure. That's so I have a very cool. small amount of people who are my exact same race and my exact same age. Most people I know are different from different countries or different ethnic backgrounds. Yes. Now, do you identify as black or as African-American? I identify as black because African-American to me seems just so like long. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and so for me, I'm just a black person from America. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. And so okay. I know it's like a lot of political understanding with that, but like, I don't know. I just always thought that sounded okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 Well, and, and I feel like just in the last couple of years, I have become much more aware of just how much privilege I have as a white man living in America. And I feel like just, you know, with things like the, the Me Too movement and, and some of these other things, I've, I've suddenly realized like, oh, I, I have had a very different experience than some of my friends. And I feel like being friends with people who are diverse and who have had different experiences than me, I think that has really led to some of the reasons why I really value having diverse friends so that we all just don't think the same thing. And, and yeah, that. and you don't feel like you're like stuck in some type of bubble or even if you're in a position of privilege, you don't get like sort of caught up in that and think that's the only way to live. And I, I find that that's what I like about having diverse friends also. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but I can see how that'd be hard if, if I was sitting in uh, Whiteville, USA. And then you'd be like a, in a Seinfeld situation where it's like, should you go make friends with the black family? But how can you do it? Yeah. What do you do? Do you purposely make friends that aren't like you? And then you it's a whole other thing. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know. So, man, we're, we're really getting into I it. Know. I like this. Yeah. I like this. This is why I like the, the friendship the game. The coachy stuff. Okay. <laughs> All right. I'm going to roll again and hopefully not get a hot sauce card. Oh, my goodness. But I hope I don't either. All right. Two. Mm -hmm. Here we go. Mm -hmm. Again. But this time with tiny hands. What? <laughs> okay. No. 
Okay. So I'm going to put on the tiny hands. That looks really fun. Uh-huh. Let me get a get a little pair here. Tiny hands. Tiny hands. Tiny hands. Tiny hands. Okay, good. So let me uh let me get your card here. So <laughs> what if you don't live in a diverse place? Hmm. You know, that's a good question. Um, to, to your point, like the Seinfeld episode, I think I probably would feel a little bit of maybe sympathy towards the one black family in town because right. I'd sort of feel like, oh man, I really hope they're being treated well by their neighbors. I hope they don't feel the that constant awareness all the time. Right. And so I think I would probably, if I just encountered them at the grocery store or whatever, I'd probably want to go out of my way to be super neighborly and friendly, to just kind of like make them feel really comfortable. But then at a certain point, am I making them feel uncomfortable by Hello. being too like, hi, <laughs> hello, hi. Like, yeah, there there have been times in my life where I've been like in China and I've been the only white person on the train. And that was really cool. That was did a thing that I really enjoyed. Do you think people noticed you? Or... I could tell that people noticed okay. me. Okay. Yeah. Did you feel like isolated immediately or were you just like, okay, I'm alive, no worries? I think because I'm a white man, I felt okay. Okay, because you weren't even, because you don't even think about it. Well, I, I just, I noticed that I was the only one like me there, but I didn't feel like I was in danger, I didn't feel at risk, I didn't feel anybody like giving me dangerous right. eyes or anything like that. I think it was just more like, oh my gosh, what a novelty, there's a white person here. Right. Like I, I was really <laughs> feeling that. So in a weird way, I almost sort of felt like it, like a celebrity. Sort of like if Al Pacino rode the train, even if everybody was trying to play it cool, they'd all still be like. <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's really kind of what the experience was. That's actually a very good diversity experience. Yeah. Have, have you ever had experiences where you have felt isolated as a woman of color? Goodness, I think so. But I'm not really sure. Like, I felt like, like once I did this program, which is, um, it's like AmeriCorps, which is the Peace yeah, Corps, but we stay in America. And part of it was we had to go and do some community service hours at a charter school. Mm -hmm. And it was like in a low income area that was like not diverse. Like the whole school was mostly black people. And then our group was a very diverse group. It was sort of strange to me because I felt like a lot of the people in our program didn't know how to talk to the children at uh, this particular school. Well, yeah, it was kind of like they were like, maybe you should do more talking to the black people because you're a black person so they understand you better. But it wasn't really like that. And I kept trying to tell everyone that it was like they understood all of us because they're children and we're like the adults. Right. Maybe when that happened, I hadn't even processed this thought. So I wasn't able to ask anyone. And so I never really... Like, I don't really know the conclusion of that feeling, but that was an experience that I had. I grew up feeling very much socioeconomic differences. Yes. So, for example, I grew up going to a very diverse church in a very, like, kind of impoverished part of town. And so, like, I didn't necessarily, as a kid, feel like, oh my gosh, that kid is black and that kid is white and that kid is Hispanic. What I really felt was like, oh man, his clothes are dirty and he smells bad. And that's not true about these kids over here. That was where I was sort of really feeling the difference. Right. That makes sense. I have that a lot too, especially growing up where like, I lived in an area where we sort of had like a little bit of money, but the area wasn't a little bit of money. I, I remember being afraid of people whose cars like had smog issues. Oh yeah. And like, I was like, was I so privileged that I was afraid of people who were in poverty or something? Like, I don't even know what that is. I went to- um, Go on. What do you call it? Um, not bilingual, duolingual school, where it was like duolingual. Spanish and English. And most of the people in the school were like from Mexico. Mm -hmm. And so I learned speaking Spanish, English to like learn elementary, like grade studies. Oh, okay. But then at one point, like my parents took me out of that school and I went to another school because of like the Girl Scouts and they wanted me in this Girl Scout troop at this other school. And this school had mostly black children. But I missed like how diverse my school was because we had like a lot of different art programs and I knew all these songs that were in another language. And I, so I felt uh. like really weird all the time because I was like, I don't know what to do. And then also economically, everyone was sort of different. So I was kind of like a weirdo person because I was just 
I don't know why my parents were artists, so they just dressed me weird on Halloween. I'd have a full costume on, and they didn't really have a costume parade at the school. <laughs> but I was still dressed like the Wicked Witch from like Wizard of Oz. Okay. And right so on. that was. Um, I think I helped me understand diversity really quickly because I knew I felt different from people who looked just like me. So wow. I knew that it wasn't like race must be a lot more than just what people look like. Yeah. And so yeah. that was an interesting experiment. <laughs> well, I, <laughs> life, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that was that was quite the turn I took there. <laughs> All right. Well, I think it's your turn to roll again. Okay. Yay. Roll the dice. Oh, but I got the same number. Funny. Do I have to drink anything? I have to drink something. <gasps> drink a sip of pickle juice. Ooh, okay, it's not hot sauce. Mm -mm. I think no, I'll be these okay. These are the pickle juice there. Why are there two? Well, just I just need to case, drink one, right? Yeah, you just okay. have to drink one. So I'm kind of like scared. Okay. Have you ever had pickle juice before? I've had a pickle. Okay, it's just like that, but liquid. Okay. You can just pretend it's like a pickle that's already so been chewed. So I just chewed. try to like do a shot really quick. Yeah, do a shot. Okay, what if it comes up through my nose? Okay. Then we'll laugh it. at you. Okay. <laughs> No one laugh. Everyone laugh. Okay, well. <laughs> it's just like a pickle, right? <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> oh my god. How is that? That's hilarious. <laughs> okay. Awesome. Okay. Awesome. I survived that. That was you cool. Did. You did. Yay. Good times. High five. <laughs> I survived that. Okay, here goes. Two. Let's see. One. I don't even two. know if I moved. I don't even. Th oh no! I had. <laughs> it's because the car told me to do something. Okay. Right. Is it worth it, even if it seems hard? So getting back to this idea of having diverse friends, is it worth it, even if it seems hard? Yeah, I think it is. I can. I can imagine how. You know, we we like to be friends with people who are similar to us and who have similar interests. Totally um, worth it. Yeah, just to just to be able to have a different perspective than the one that you already have. And then also run by your life experience, because there's some stuff that's going on that you're doing or we're doing as people that are like, that needs to be talked about with another group. Totally. And so it's good to like kind of run that path past another group of people. Or mm -hmm. So I think that's kind of neat too. Yeah, and, and I think when, when you see the news and maybe you see that there are people of different races who aren't getting along, being able to, to talk about those things with with people who maybe have some different ideas or at least who have had a different experience my my neighbors right across the hall here they moved here from syria just a few years oh, yeah. ago um you know and i remember fourth of july they're ready for fireworks but it was because burbank celebrated a hundred years and there were just fireworks on a tuesday night That's and they they grew very upset they heard loud explosions and it was such a wake-up call for me to think Oh wow, this has been a part of their experience. Adam, I had the same like a similar experience. Did you really? And it was really eye-opening for me because there's always there's like levels of diversity, right? There's like mm -hmm. gender and then there's like racial and then there's like the America and then the whole other world. Totally. And sometimes I get sort of I forget about the America part and I'm just like I'm just a black person. There's a lot of stuff going on with that. <laughs> and I'm like right. that's enough, but then I forget like American privilege which we all have mm -hmm. and like a lot of people talk about the different privileges, but we never talk about just the plain American privileges like Nothing really scary like that happens here, right. you know? Yeah. So, yeah. Draw. I think it's, that was fun. Okay, here we are. Three, three. Okay. Woo, Woo big number. Hands three, up. four, five, and then six. Okay. And then I'm going to grab a card. Yes, you are. And my card says, you're really great, but you lose. Oh, no. Okay, you, you lost the game, and you wanted to win so bad. I forgot about winning halfway through the game, though, and I think that's the best part. The fact that you forgot. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry that you lost. Well, um, I, I haven't officially won yet either. I mean, it's still possible that I will lose. Let's see, let's see what happens next. Yeah, it's not as much fun without you, I'm just saying. I really want to put tiny hands on still. Same question. Wait, what? Same question. You're really great, but you lose? Well, well, this golly, is, we both lost. This is a bit existential here. <laughs> the game won the game. The game won the game. But so, we have diverse friends, so we win. We definitely <laughs> do. So, so let's put on some uh, tiny some, hands. Some, some tiny hands. Boom! <laughs> Double high five. Double high five. <laughs> That's I wonder, awesome. Is it possible to do a thumb war? Yeah. One, two, three, four. I, de <laughs> I declare a thumb war. Yeah. 
Look. Uh, okay. <laughs> well, Sherry, I'm so thankful that you came to play this game with me, and thank you for sharing your perspectives on race and diversity with me. I'm so glad that I feel like because you and I have such different perspectives, I've been able to benefit from you, so thank you. Thanks for inviting me. I love the friendship game. I love the tiny hands. Right, goodbye, everybody. Bye. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. For more Adam's Answers episodes, you can click right here. And please don't forget to subscribe. That happens down here. Laugh a little, think a lot, love better.